Today, let's make some classic socks on the Superba machine. I will be demonstrating making these to fit size six and a half feet. The Simply Superba sock pattern will be in Country Knitting of Maine News and Views sometime in 2021 in its written version, and it will cover all adult sizes for both ladies and men. We'll use Knit One, Pearl One ribbing, a tubular cast on, and we're not going to knit the cast on as tightly as we possibly can because sometimes that's too tight to slip it over the feet. Heel is short road, toe is shaped by decreasing, and there's a seam up the center back of the ribbing. My samples are made with number one sock yarn. I use two yarns, Regia four ply and Ice smart sock yarn. Both work really well. Both are 75% wool and 25% of polyamide, which is a stretchy fiber that helps with memory and long-term wear. Both get a little bit different of a gauge because of that stretchy fiber than we might normally get in number one yarn. After resting and washing, I get eight stitches, 10 rows per inch. We'll do the tubular cast on to start out in ribbing. That begins with both beds set at a very small stitch size and the upside down V key for normal stockinette knitting. I've started and hung my combs and waist yarn because it makes it much easier to demonstrate. You do not have to do so. You can start directly in main yarn, but it will actually make it easier to knit your socks with waist yarn followed by a row of ravel cord also. Bring every other needle into work across a span of 64 needles, but each bed only has every other one and they should alternate. On a Superba, comb and a good bit of weight are absolutely essential. The white yarn is my waist yarn. Here comes the main yarn. At the small stitch size, and I settled on 1.5 as most successful with this yarn, knit the zigzag row, change to the circular arrow keys on both locks, turn up the stitch size a little bit, and knit two circular rows. Engage the stockinette key again, the inverted V on both beds. Knit one more row and our cast on is complete. Now turn up both beds to the size you've decided on for ribbing. I found stitch size five to be best on both beds for this yarn. For five inch sock tops, that is five inches above the heel shaping, we'll knit 50 rows of ribbing. Double check the position of this dial. We want it at the little O setting. And the needle return levers should be set to the middle setting. Transfer all the stitches to the back bed using the double eye transfer tool to pick up those from the front bed, slide them over to the back bed and replace them on the needles that were formerly empty. Hit the cancel key on the front bed. With all 64 stitches on the back bed, change to the knitting size, stitch size for the main knitting, which I found six worked to get the gauge for me, and knit one row. For this next step, you're going to need to remove the comb and the weights because leaving it in position will prevent the fabric from folding as we need it to do. Therefore, it's necessary to have a bunch of heel grips or heavy forks which are from my Cool Tools and Cheap Tricks book, or a lot of claw weights because we do need to control the fabric and keep it from jumping off the needles as we manipulate it. What has to happen is that one quarter of the total stitch count must be lifted at each side of the work, rotated around, and placed on the front bed so that we can continue to knit the sock, but as a tube. For the right bunch 16 stitches i am using a multi-prong tool and showing you how to do it that way the trick to success with this is making absolutely certain that each stitch actually does get seated on the tool and then in turn on the new needle hooks so be meticulous slow and turn your head so that you can see the stitch from multiple angles snip the working yarn 
so that we're free to move the stitches. Then very carefully rotate it, the loose fabric around so it now opposes the other piece of fabric and it can be hung on the front bed. This is where having some weights across the fabric that remains on the back bed will help prevent stitches from jumping off to their doom. At this point, there are the 32 stitches on the back bed that are going to remain on the back bed. There are 16 stitches to their right on your tool and 16 stitches to the left of those that will remain on the back bed that we haven't done anything with yet. Place the 16 needles on the front bed in work in such a way that they directly oppose the 16 on the right of the back bed of the 32 that are going to remain in work. And then we will settle the stitches that are now on the tool on the front bed on those newly in work needles. I would love to tell you that you can rotate the tool, hook it onto the needle hooks, and give a nice flick of the wrist and seat the new stitches, but it doesn't work for me. I can actually do it on a bulky, but I cannot manage it on the Superba reliably enough to want to do it. So I do what you're seeing, meticulously nudge every stitch into its correct position and check and double check. Immediately get some weight on the newly hung fabric so that it is not tempted to jump off and ruin all your hard work. If you do not possess a multi-prong transfer tool, you have two other options. I'm going to show you my, my favorite of the two on the other side of the work. The one I won't be demonstrating is to scrap each group of 16 stitches off on a separate waist yarn flap, turn the work and rehang from the waist yarn, then remove the waist yarn. But what I'm showing you here is using a very slender, very inexpensive circular needle that's meant for hand knitting. Pick up the 16 stitches, this time the ones on the left, onto the needle, put their former needles out of work, rotate the piece of fabric, and begin rehanging the 16 stitches on 16 needles on the front bed. The first of those needles on the front bed should be right next to where we hung the right hand section of stitches. And we should end up with 32 stitches on each bed in perfect opposition to one another. I actually think that working on a Superba, the circular needle method may be a little bit easier and a little bit more secure. In theory, it's a lot slower. But since in actual fact, I do have to be just as meticulous with the first method, the multi-prong transfer tool, this one works as well and as fast for me. And the circular needle is more likely if you fumble for a moment to hold on to the stitches or at least all but the last one on the end than the multi-prong transfer tool is. But same deal, be meticulous, be slow, check and double check. You do have to be more careful about not accidentally twisting a stitch when you hang it using the circular needle. But it's very easy to tell, you just have to focus on that fact. Also, if you have a little prong tool like this one that has a curved tine or a bent tine at the end, it can be an easier way to get the stitch off of the circular knitting needle and onto the machine than our normal tools. Any stitches that are already hung, such as the group on the right, or as we hang this group on the left, it can be helpful to place the needles that hold those stitches all the way forward and hold where they can't pop off and do mischief when you're not looking. When all the stitches are hung, look along the row of them, check for any that are split and any that are twisted, and should you find any, lift them off one at a time, rearrange them so they are not split and or twisted, and everything will go forward just fine. Now it's time to use the cancel key on the back bed because we do not want it to knit, and the normal knitting inverted V key 
on the front bed because that's where we will be knitting the heel. Make sure all the fabric is weighted, but particularly what is on, hung on the front bed. And you do have to be quite careful to make sure that your weight doesn't catch in both layers of fabric, front bed fabric and back bed fabric, because the heel pouch that we'll be knitting is going to make extra length of knitting and we need to be pulling that down to keep our stitches knitting off neatly. If the needles are extended all the way up as mine are, set the carriage, the needle retractor buttons so that it will knit them back from hold this row. I actually did that, but then suffered a mishap that involved some rehanging, so that's why you're not seeing it happen. Thread the carriage again and be Begin short rowing in. That's where the rows get shorter and shorter to shape the heel. The method that I am showing you comes as close to German short rows as we can do on the knitting machine. You can also use the knit wrap knit method if you want. I like this one so that's what I'm demonstrating but both make a presentable sock heel. To use this method, knit across all 32 stitches, place the last needle that knitted into hold, knit across the remaining 31, place the last needle that knitted into hold, and continue doing that. You have a little bit of choice about the exact shape of your heel. I'll be short rowing down until only 10 stitches remain in work. You could also choose 12 stitches to remain in work. 10 stitches is going to be about an inch and a quarter wide at the narrowest part of the heel. Uh, it's closer to an inch and a half if we go with 12 stitches. Watch the stitches that are still knitting. You will begin to see them ride up. This is because we don't have the weights properly placed anymore. The vectors have shifted as the pocket for the heel grows. Every time you see this happen, it's very important to reposition the weights so they're pulling down directly on the stitches that are still knitting. Otherwise, they will jump off and run amok. Continue in this manner until a final stitch has gone into hold. There should be equal numbers in hold on each side of the work. And now we begin short rowing out, the process by which each row gets a little bit longer. To do that, on the side away from the carriage, Place one needle back in work every row. It should be the needle closest to those that have been knitting, but it was a held needle. If you wish, you can combine this automatic wrap method that I showed you with the knit wrap knit method. As you short row out to do that, you wrap the nearest needle to the last one that is knitting on any given row. It does reinforce the heels for things like work socks that will be born, born inside boots. It isn't quite as smooth. It may limit holes, but I find that on the Superba machine, using this kind of yarn we're using with a little bit of stretch and the method of automatic wrapping, holes are not a problem. You really don't get them. Add a needle back to work every row. And when the last one is added on that end, wrap the working yarn across to the back bed needle that is nearest. That also helps avoid holes. Okay, the hard part is done. If you need a wine break, go take it, and I'll be here when you get back. Set both beds to the circular arrow key and the size of stitch for the main knitting, 6-6 six, six for me. Set the row counter to zero and knit in tubular knitting, which is what we've already set up for, for 98 rows. That sounds like a lot because actually each row on the counter is half a round on the sock. Using a two-prong tool, make a full fashion decrease on each side of each bed. We're moving over only one needle space, but the doubled up stitches will end on needle two from the edge, not the very first needle. Knit four rows, which is of course actually only two rounds. Do the same thing again. Full fashion decrease on each side of each bed. Do this all the way down to the point of the toe. 
Again, there is room for some personal taste. You can decrease down to 10 stitches or 12 or even 8 for a pointier toe. After the final decrease, you have some choices. In either case, knit two rows so that there is no longer a pair of stitches on any of the needles. After that, you may scrap off and Kitchener stitch the ends of the toe together for a perfect join, or you may transfer all the stitches to the back bed and bind off with the transfer bind off. This is not a classic, but it also isn't uncomfortable. It's a perfectly neat finish. So if you're one of the people who finds Kitchener stitch to be a fate worse than death, you don't really have to do it. I give you permission. If by chance you don't know the transfer bind off, here it is. Transfer the end stitch one stitch over, pull the needle forward, lay the yarn in the hook, pull back, a new stitch has been formed. Take the new stitch, transfer it to the next needle over, push forward, yarn into the hook, pull back, transfer the new stitch, and so on. So our sock only needs a tiny bit of hand finishing now. Naturally, all the ends should be secured and woven in, but there aren't very many. There's the initial one, the one when we um, rotated the rib section, and the final one. That should be all. The ribbing does need to be seamed together up the center back. And of course, if you used waste yarn, as I did, that needs to come off. 